Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to talk in more detail about thrombocytes, and their common name, of course, is platelets. So first of all, how many platelets do we have at any given time in the blood? Well, depending on the person and genetic factors, we have anywhere between 150,000 to 400,000 platelets in the blood. And remember what platelets are going to be doing. Their function is to promote blood clotting. So when you have damage to the blood vessel, they're going to stick to that wall of the damaged blood vessel to prevent blood loss. And then they're going to be able to trigger coagulation, particularly of the intrinsic pathway of coagulation, to seal off that wound. And in the process, they're also going to release chemicals that are going to cause vasoconstriction, so that you don't have so much blood running through it, and then also chemicals that are going to stimulate the healing process for that injury site, okay? Now, platelets are only gonna last around eight to 10 days. They have a very short lifespan. In fact, on average, they have the shortest lifespan of all formed elements in the blood. And so for that reason, they have to continually be generated. Now, they're gonna be generated ultimately from cells that are very large called megakaryocytes. We actually see a megakaryocyte right here. Relatively speaking, it's a very, very large cell. Okay? Now, the megakaryocyte, I want you to imagine, it's like a dinner plate. Okay? I'll explain why I, I mentioned that in a few minutes. But this is like a large dinner plate, just a really big circular cell. And this megakaryocyte cannot leave the bone marrow. Remember that hematopoiesis, the formation of all these formed elements, occurs in the red bone marrow. This megakaryocyte can't leave. So rather, what it does to give the blood platelets is it'll extend these arms through gaps in the endothelial cells. So the megakaryocyte will put foot-like projections, almost like pseudopodia, through the endothelial cells and into the blood. And just with the sheer movement of the blood, it's going to practically slice off pieces of these legs. And so ultimately what you're going to get are these little platelets that fragment off. And I don't know this for a fact, but it at least helped me remember it. If you think of the megakaryocyte like a plate, if you were to throw a plate on the ground, it's going to shatter into a million little pieces, right? So those would be platelets. I don't know if that's where the name platelet comes from, but I like to think that these are the fragments of a large dinner plate. So maybe that'll help you. Now, as I mentioned, the thrombocyte or platelet functions in hemostasis, preventing blood loss by forming a primary hemostatic plug. So we talked about this in another video. The platelets are going to wall off the injury site to prevent blood loss, but then they're also going to trigger coagulation so that we get a clot to further prevent that blood loss because we need to keep the blood in the vasculature. Now, a few other things about platelets before we really go into some detail on their development. Uh, there are several factors that initiate a blood clot and increase risk for clotting disorders that have to do with platelets. Okay? First of all, if you have any inflammation, so inflammation in general is going to cause damage to blood vessels. Okay? And so when you have damaged blood vessels, the damaged endothelial cells, which are these cells right here, are going to release chemicals that activate platelets. And any time you unnecessarily activate a platelet, you're going to increase the risk of a blood clot forming, and that can actually break loose eventually and cause a stroke. So that's very bad. Additionally, atherosclerosis is caused by inflammation. So just inflammation in general is really bad. Okay? But that inflammation can trigger activation of platelets because inflammation damages these endothelial cells, causing platelet activation. Additionally, impaired blood flow can also trigger this because impaired blood flow makes it more likely that the platelet will actually stick to the wall here and it may actually become activated. So the main point of this is that we need platelets to function when there's blood vessel injury, but there are certain factors that can cause platelets to become abnormally activated and that can lead to a blood clot in the blood. And if a blood clot were to stick on the vessel wall right here, it would occlude blood flow. And when it sticks on the vessel wall, that's what's called a thrombus. If that thrombus were to break loose and then travel freely in the blood, it becomes an embolus. Okay? 
If that embolus was to move into the cerebral arteries of your brain, it could cut off blood flow to a part of the brain and produce a stroke. If it made its way into the coronary arteries of the heart and included blood flow there, it would cause a heart attack. So embolus, very, very bad. But when platelets are working normally, now I briefly talked about megakaryocytes here and how they fragment into platelets. I want to talk a little bit more about the platelet developmental pathway. Now all formed elements are made through hematopoiesis in the red bone marrow. Okay? Here we look at red blood cells over on the left and platelets are on the right. Now of course we have a baseline level of red blood cells. Okay? But you can augment that red blood cell count, the hematocrit in other words, by going up in altitude or you can do all sorts of cardiorespiratory exercise, and you can increase the amount of red blood cells that you have. Okay. In contrast to red blood cell formation, thrombopoiesis, or the formation of platelets, is constant. You can't really change your diet, or you can't exercise more and produce more platelets. It's constant production. And the liver and the kidneys are going to generate that colony-stimulating factor called thrombopoietin. And that thrombopoietin is what triggers a stem cell in the red bone marrow, to form a megakaryocyte, and then of course the megakaryocyte is going to fragment those platelets into the blood. Okay? But the liver is going to constitutively generate thrombopoietin. So to summarize this right here, the thrombopoietin or TPO and a specific colony stimulating factor called CFU MEG, okay? the MEG stands for megakaryocyte, these two are going to synergistically cause megakaryoblasts, that's actually what this is right here, to differentiate into megakaryocytes. And that's again occurring in the red bone marrow. So megakaryoblast differentiate into a pro-megakaryocyte and then eventually into a megakaryocyte, which is shown right here, a very, very large cell that looks like a big plate. Okay? And so that megakaryocyte will then adhere to the vessel wall near the red bone marrow so again, this is still in the red bone marrow, but there's blood vessels moving through it. And it extends arms between the endothelial cells, and the force of the blood produces shear force, and it literally just rips off these arms into little fragments called platelets. Okay? So after the megakaryocyte starts to fragment, initially you get proplatelets, and there's a couple other steps within there, like preplatelets, but ultimately you get platelets, which then can function in blood clotting. All right, so hopefully this makes sense, the process of thrombopoiesis and overall the functions of platelets. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much. Here's a plug for The Anatomy Gal, a channel made by my friend and colleague, Natalie Wade. She's got excellent tutorials and explanations for lab materials in anatomy and physiology, even with cadavers, so it's really cool. Be sure to check out her channel and subscribe. A link is in the description below.